Well, this is kind of strange. They've changed the inner key to an input key. Huh. And they wasted a key here with an equal sign. Well, let's see. If I do two, and then let's do three, and we'll add those two. Well, how come I don't get five? Oh, well, because this is the HP 20S. Now, this is sort of a quirky little calculator. It's an algebraic calculator from HP. Now, why take a look at a algebraic calculator? Well, for one, it uh, apparently was fairly popular among a number of people. And why? Because it has the famous HP build quality, great key feel, and actually one of the nicest single line displays that I've seen. I really like it. Um, but it's an algebraic calculator. It does have its quirks, though. And I'm going to step through just briefly uh, the functionality that it has and how you use it and uh, my thoughts about it. I debated on whether to do an in-depth, piece-by-piece look at this as I've done with several other calculators, but I don't think it's really necessary here. Most of the things are pretty straightforward. There's no menus to really drive through. Everything you see on the keyboard is what you get. So first, I guess we could go through statistics. So you have your statistics register and you can enter in your X and your Y value and that's what you would use your in input for. So I could do one and then two and enter both of those into my register. And I've got one value in the register. Uh, four and two, enter that in. I've got two values, uh, one and three. Let's do five, enter that in, got three values. And then I can go ahead and take a look at my means. If I look at my X and Y, there's the mean of my X's. And I can swap that little indicator right there. It tells me that there's another value in the other register. There's pretty much only two registers, if you think of it in terms of a stack on this thing. So I swap, and the average value of my Y register is three. And I can look at my uh, my linear regression. I can see my my x value, my y value. I can look at my slope if I'm doing this as a linear regression. Um, again, swap, and now I can swap and see the y-intercept. Um, polar to rectangular conversion. Similar, I use the input button because I'm entering, these are two number operations. So if I'm converting, say, oh, let's go 5 at angle 45, and I'm going to convert that to rectangular, shift to rectangular, that gives me 3.536, and we better have the same in the other register. Yep, because we had a 45 degree angle. You have your uh, you know, basic operations, your square root, square symbol, you have um, e to the x, x is just going to be whatever number you enter, and then e to that number. And in many ways, this, this is what makes a RPN calculator a little more intuitive to me, is you know, for some operations you're doing 45 plus 10, and then equals, so you do your number, you do an operation, you do your number, you get your equal sign. But then other ones just require just one input. If I want to do the square root of 5, I just hit the square root button. I don't have to do square root 5 and then equal. So some still seem like RPN calculations and some are algebraic calculations. Anyway, your natural log, your log, your percent, y to the x, and this would actually be kind of backwards to what you would uh, do 5 to the third power. So what should that give me? 125. So it's not entering in the two numbers like you would with the two number input. 1 over x. You can store and recall variables. You have your pi. Hyperbolic, that changes all of these functions. Your sine, cosine, tangent your arctangent, arcsine, arccosine, all of those to hyperbolic functions if you do that first. 
you can set the calculator in degrees radian mode. There's no menu here, so if I want to go to degrees mode, I do shift to that. I can shift to radian mode, and now I have the enunciator telling me I'm in radian mode. Right now I'm in fix three if I want to change it to engineering. I've got fixed, scientific, engineering, or all. So I can change it to engineering. Well, I want engineering and I want four digits. Now I have engineering with four digits. Let's shift that to all. This has several built-in programs. You can add your own using the program button, but it has several built-in programs using the load, and you can load a built-in program. I guess you would need to know the, uh, the number for that. Um, but you can load a root solver, you can load a 3x3 three three matrix solver. I'll go into more detail on that in a second video. Go to label, those are programming functions. You can scroll up and down, do comparisons. Find the absolute value of a number or round a number. Find the integer portion, find the fraction portion. Here's your conversions that you find on some of the other calculators. So instead of a menu again, so I've got 45 and I want to convert that to binary. And I shift and I get binary. One zero, one zero. I can't enter any of the numbers besides one and zero. Let's and oh, one zero, one, one, one. There's my answer. Convert it back to decimal. And I'm going to go back to degrees here so I get that enunciator off. My hours, hours, minutes, seconds conversion. So if I have 12 hours and 30 minutes and 29 seconds, I convert that to decimal format, and I get 12.5 something hours, which is 12 hours, 30 minutes is a little over 12 and a half hours. Degrees and radians, you know how degrees and radians work. You convert those. Um, Oh, one other note on the hours, minutes, seconds. I use that all the time for latitude and longitude when I'm converting from degrees, minutes, uh, seconds to a decimal format or vice versa. To go back, I could do 12.45 um, uh, hours and convert that to hours, minutes, seconds. And that gives me how you would read this is 12 hours, 27 minutes, 31 seconds, and 32 hundredths of a second. So 31.32 seconds. You have kilograms and pounds, convert back and forth, centigrade, Fahrenheit, centimeters, inches, liters, and gallons. Then for your probability, you can enter in, assume the two numbers, so four, and five, nope, so it's going to be four in combination, five, well, how does that work? All right, well, I obviously don't know how probability works. You got your factorial. Uh, last will show you the last number that you entered. Show will show you all digits. So, for example, if I go to, let's see, I, I fix it to two digits. Fix two. There. So I have my display fixed to two digits, and I enter in pi. Now, it'll only show me two digits of pi, but if I hit show, that will give me all of the digits that are actually stored in the calculator memory. So just remember that it doesn't matter how many digits you actually have shown here, um, the full precision of that the calculator is capable of is stored. Now if you go ahead and round it using this key, then it should round to that precision. So now if I show, yeah, if it rounded to 3.14, etc., yeah, it's all zero after that because it actually rounded down the number to my current precision. Clear registers. You can clear your alpha registers, whatever you've stored, and clear your summation.
I mean, not, not alpha register, clear the registers here, and clear summation. So that's a basic overview of the calculator. So some of the things that I like about it, of course, if you're an algebraic entry fan, this will be probably the calculator for you. Um, it has most of the scientific features, which is nice. Um, it does have numerical integration. It is buried in one of these pro, uh, pre-programmed options. Uh, again, I'll go into detail on that. You can add your own programs. It has a solver. So it has all of this, this functionality, but it is kind of quirky in some of the way it does things. The input and the way you deal with two numbers doesn't seem very intuitive to me. I mean, you get used to it. The uh, parentheses here, I guess you would use that when you're entering your equations, but you know, there's two keys that are taken up with just parentheses. And then some of the functions like here, your exponent, which if this is a scientific calculator, I'm going to be doing you know, 45 times 10 to the third all the time, something like that. And now I have to do a shift to get to the exponent. That just doesn't seem very smart to me. I would have made that its own key, maybe one of these parentheses keys. Um, yeah, so that's, that's about it. As far as I know, it does not handle complex numbers. Um, but it, it's a basic scientific calculator, and if you want algebraic, then, well, I guess this is, this is the calculator for you. It's not my favorite. I do like the build quality, and I like the screen, but I'd certainly choose another calculator and uh, go all RPN if I could.